Hi, my name is Sami and today I'm going to show you how to add a dynamic question list to Bot Framework Composer. Now, to kick off, we need somehow to generate a random list of questions. So by making use of Azure functions, for those who do not know what Azure functions are, they are serverless uh, web APIs. So you can build your own API with uh, Azure functions. Now, what I did is created a small function. It's called get questions. And what it does, it, well, I create a static list of a couple of questions. I have seven in total. And I also added a list of possible responses. Now, at the end, I'll take just three of them, I sort them at randomly and take the last, well, take the first three that get back. And that I send back to, to the, in the request. Now, if you have, want to have a look of how that looks like, and so we do a get or a post, doesn't really matter in this case. We look, send a request, and it's not gonna work because I have not started my function yet. So let's run it. There we have get question is available. Let's go back. So I have a post request or a get request that I can do now. And what it returns is me an array of three objects, question ID one, question ID three and six. So if I change this, I have three, four, two. So as you see, it's quite random. Now, this data now we want to consume within the Bot Framework Composer. So let's open Bot Framework Composer and create a new project we'll do from scratch. And let's call it the QBot. Great. So what we see here first is a greeting message, which is just saying welcome user. Um, let's change it to hey I'm um, QBot. So we'll go to the bot responses and let's look into the comments where this welcome user is available. So we'll say welcome to the queue bot and well, let's randomly select the answer given or the response given by the bot. So when you enter the bot, it will say welcome to the queue bot or hi, my name is queue bot. How can I help you? Great. Let's go back to the designer. Great, so what we want to do is create a dialogue. A dialogue within a, a, a chatbot is like, an, is a part of a conversation where you want to reach a specific action. It could be collecting some data, or doing an action, um, it's up to you and that again that action could be for the user or could be something on the end um, end environment so what we're gonna do now is create a new dialogue I'll call it ask a question now before ask a question can be triggered well, we need to somehow call it in a usual chatbot we might use Lewis and generate an intent to recognize when someone needs to go to ask the questionnaire section of the chatbot. Uh, that might be with adding here a trigger and then we'll give it some trigger phrases so that Lewis, the NLP module of Microsoft can uh, train on it and get rec and recognize what you want. We're not gonna make use of this now. We're just gonna do immediately after the greeting, we're going to dialogue management and begin a new dialogue. And so the moment after the welcome, we're going to straight to the questionnaires. And here we're gonna choose for ask a question. Great. Now we're ready to and set to start our conversation. Now, the first thing that we would like to do is send a response, just to know that we're within that uh, dialogue. Let me ask you some questions. Now we want to get the data that we, of the API that we just generated. So we click 
ads and we say access external resources and click send an HTTP request. We click on this, we add HTTP methods, we can say post or get depending on the, the parameters of your uh, API. Now we need to add the URL, now in this case that's this part, get questions. A body in this case we don't need, but again that depends on the features of your API. Maybe you need a user ID to personalize the questionnaire or uh, could be as well a token. It might not be sent through the body, but then through the headers. Now, where do we want to save the result of that request? Let's say dialog.api response. That brings me immediately to the different kinds of properties that you have within the chatbot. So a property is where you can save certain data during a conversation, during a dialogue, or within uh, a user environment. Now, on user level, it means that when a user come back and a couple of days later, you, can, you still know, for example, his name. So you could use the property user.name for that. If it's within a conversation, so it's before you close the window, you could say, or a session, uh, it's on the conversation dot something, your property name. Now in this case we're going to save the value of the API and the dialogue.api response, so on dialogue level. What kind of data do we get? It's an application.json, application slash json and the response type is of course json. That's it. We will get the response of our API. Of course, we would like to check if the request went successfully. So the first thing we will add after this is a create a condition, which is an expression. And we will say dialog.api response status code needs to be equal to 200. If not, well, let's send a message to the user. Something went wrong. Please try again later. Now in the true section, well here we want to actually show our messages or questions, but let's just for a debugging see if we actually get the data. So what we're going to do is add first for each. I uh, will not even start with it for each, we'll just send a response and we will show the content of the, res of the response of the HTTP request. So in this case, we use the dollar curly brackets to use variables. And we'll say dialog.api response.content. Let's start our bot. Might take a couple of seconds to build it. And then we can test it with the bot framework emulator, which is a small tool that you can install on your computer to debug uh, chatbots built with bot framework, bot framework composer, as well as with the bot framework SDK. Great, there we are. We just allow the access. And we can test it in the emulator. So welcome to the QBot, that's the greeting that we had changed, then the response that we had given when we entered the dialog, and then we decided to just print the full um, content of the request. So this is equal to what we get and see here. Now we want to split this of course per question. Now let's, what are we going to do, we go back to Composer, we're going to remove this element, we don't need that. And we're going to add a for each loop. So we want to run through each element in that array. Now, what do we want to loop through? Now, this is dialog.api response.contents. Now, for each element within this property, and this is property that got generated by the HTTP request, we will generate a new property, dialog for each index, which is the number within the array index of the array and then of course the value and the value will then be one specific question with again each property so 
and here we are within our loop and now we want to ask a question so we'll use ask question multi choice not just text we want to give the possibilities to give the specific answer of choice so multi choice again now we need to fill in or show the question itself so if we go back for each item brackets to show it but now we need to say dot question text this question text is equal to what has been generated here in our object we go to user inputs we need to tell us where we want to save the answer so we're gonna save the dialog Output format is value or index. What does this mean? Um, we have our array of possible responses here. So if we would say index, then if we choose none, it would be on zero. If it's mild, one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, but in our case, just as an example, we just want the real text value that has been clicked. So we'll click on value. These items can be lifted empty uh, how do we want to show the multiple choice while well, we want to have suggested actions and here we need to fill in the different possibilities since this is an array that we already have and it's called our possible question responses we'll copy the name we can choose here for write expression and we say equal to dialog dot for each dot value dot possible all the rest again we can leave empty but one more feature that we cannot forget is in the other uh, tab in the property configuration that we need to enable always prompt on true now why is this necessary in this case now if you notice back in our user input we say for answer in dialog.answer now if we would leave this always prompt on false it means that when dialog.answer has already been filled in, it will not ask the question again. Very useful, but not in this case, because we keep on overwriting the same property. So we need to set it on true, always ask, otherwise the question will not, the next question will not be asked. Now let's restart the bot and see what results we have now. Great. So we can test it back in the emulator. I'll click restart conversation. So welcome to the QBot. Let me ask you some questions. And here we go. We have our first question with a couple of possible responses. So we click severe in this case, uh, moderate, and we can go on. But of course now, what are we gonna do with the answer since it's overwritten the property each time? Now, what we could do is, well, remember we have that Azure function, Azure function that gives us data and we could also use an Azure function to write data or our API. Uh, so in this case we have get question. Now I just created it. It's an empty uh, function that just replies, okay, data is saved. But you could build something that could save your data, for example, to a uh, SQL data. Is we add after the answer access external resources send an HTTP request now we could do a post here and let me copy the URL of this one save answer Great. we don't need a body yet we need a body what I was saying
body that we're sending back to the API to save more information. So let's restart our bot. Of course, in normal cases, you might also add some headers to it for authentication of your API, for example, the token. Part for sending data, but we're not getting any data back. But you could also respond with, for example, data saved well and use that to, to go for the next steps. Or even get the second question. So we can go back to test the template, restart. And now I want to show you some debugging functionality of uh, Bot Framework. Now, here in the login, you might see. see the three questions three questions that got that we got as an answer back from the API now if we click an answer wild for example you will notice if I scroll down we do another post request here save now the request will be answer is mild question ID one so we have our data now so in this little video I showed you how to create a little chatbot that can get data from an API, in this case a list of different questions, show them into the chatbot in a dynamic way and then of course also save the information to, uh, to your backend system. So I hope you enjoyed it, um, I hope to see you soon again, thank you.